Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. So for today's weekly Jinx video, which we do every Wednesday about anything to do with Jinx, as well as this video acting as a weekly discussion thread in the Jinx subreddit, our League of Jinx, make sure to check that out. What we do every two weeks when a new patch drops is we talk about that patch. Changes to Jinx, changes that might affect Jinx, and then something of an 80 carry tier list at the end. And we're going to be doing a two tier list this time. One of a general 80 carry tier list, and one of an 80 carry tier list against Jinx and with Jinx specifically, because this is the last patch of the ranked climb. So next Tuesday, rank season ends, you need to know kind of what maybe you should be playing and what shouldn't you be playing, hopefully, to make it to that rank that you so desire. So by all means, make sure to watch to the end of the video to see both that tier list. And if you disagree, you can also kind of add your own champions or own reasons why you think certain champions should be banned against or banned if you're not playing Jinx and such like that. So with that being said, first, the patch itself. Patch 822 came with no changes to Jinx specifically, but changes to two other champions that might affect Jinx in terms of matchups in the bottom lane. The first being Jin, a lot of bug fixes. Now, in particular, Jin didn't really get like a buff or a nerf. They were literally all bug fixes to his passive. They kind of have to work at the interaction with Halo Blades and Haste. So overall, as a champion, Jin might fall down the 80 carry tier list like a little bit, but against Jinx specifically, some mobility is better than like the no mobility that Jinx basically has. So that matchup actually is probably staying the same, but he might be a little bit weaker. It will take some time, of course, to see what's going to happen, but because the ranked season does end next Tuesday, we don't have a full like two patches to really analyze this. We kind of have to make some predictions right now from the get-go. So I will say this matchup could change, it could be a bit more in your favor because Jin won't have as much mobility as he's kind of known and frustrating for having right now. And as such, you might be able to match up with him a little bit better in lane. However, also nothing might change because it's a really bug fixes and not really a nerf or a buff in either way. The other change, though, that might be a bit more significant, at least in my opinion looking at it, is actually Pike. Basically, his gray health no longer scales with max health, but scales harder off of AD. However, his W movement speeds decrease and scales off of Lethality instead of AD. The E stun now scales off of Lethality instead of AD. And the R scales with Lethality instead of AD. So basically what they want to do is make Pike build Lethality to do a lot of damage. Obviously, it's with, especially with the end of the season coming up, people if they get out of the support, they still want to carry. Pike is a champion that you can do that on. But now he's going to have to build more of the Lethality items and remain squishier instead of building a Black Cleaver, getting some AD, but getting a lot of gray health because of that interaction and because that's an item and all that stuff too, right? Like, Pike doesn't get health from traditional health items. He gets it from AD right now. But now it's going to be less. He's going to be squishier, but he's going to do more damage, so there is kind of that. So you might be playing against more Pikes in lane, but you might be playing with Pikes in lane as well, and in which case, in that case, you might want to know how Jinx works with Pike. We kind of covered this several weeks ago when Pike first came out. One of the biggest interactions, of course, is when he goes in for the E-Stun, have your Flame Chompers ready. That's kind of like his own Thresh Hook. His hook and his E-Stun are both things you can layer your Flame Chompers off of for like a CC combo. He's probably going to take Ignite. And the thing about his Execute is if he does get the last hit and you get an assist on his ultimate, you'll still get assist gold. So you can actually ult early if you if you kind of like predict it and you predict it wrong. And if he picks up the kill, you're still going to get all the kill gold, so it's fine. And vice versa, if he ults early, then you can ult because they're probably guaranteed very low. And it's probably a guaranteed kill with the Super Mega Death Rocket. So with that being said, that's also an interaction there too that might be able to work. But it does require you to be a kill lane instead of like a passive scale up lane so there is that to note there really aren't any other main changes on 822 that really will affect jinx so we're gonna jump into the tier list again as you, you know are watching this video make sure to watch through this tier list so that if you disagree with me totally fine and you can give your own opinion maybe in the comments down below about what you actually think is better or maybe even worse so that being said, what I try to do for this tier list is go over several websites, my own games and other games of people, to get an idea of what is good collectively in certain tiers and what is collectively bad in certain tiers. So, when it came to the S tier, what seemed to be kind of a consistent thing was Heimerdinger was up there. I'm not necessarily going like these are, I'm going per tier, not necessarily like what's the best in each tier to the worst in each tier. So when I mention champions per tier, they could all be interchangeable by the way too. But with that being said, Heimerdinger, first one we're going to talk about briefly, and Mordekaiser with the asterisk, and even Mobilitics is talking about how uh, Mordekaiser is actually like a super OP. There are two champions that are more like mage bot lane champions that you could play if that's your playstyle right now and actually succeed in the bottom lane. But for more traditional AD carries, Twitch, Misfortune, Lucian, and Ash are all at the top right now, especially towards this end of the season. They're good at what they do, they're good in the lane, and they can be good out of lane either with Ash, with her utility, or with Lucian gaining a lead lane and then snowballing it after that. Misfortune, of course, with her Q, which still is allowed to exist in this game, 
Also honorable mention to Swain in terms of the mages though. He's something that's actually pretty powerful if you're still into that playstyle right now. So you might see him towards the end of the season right now if you have like a Swain main that's just trying to like climb with just Swain no matter what and they lock in Swain bot lane too. That being said, A tier, Sivir, Draven, Jinx, Jin, Kogma. Obviously, Draven, for example, plays a lot different than Jinx, but at the end of the season, CC and AoE are a great way to climb, especially in lower elos. Higher elos, this list might not apply to as much, because also, if, like, if you're in mid to high diamond, you might want to get to Masters, but you could probably decay safely right now, till Tuesday, next Tuesday, and still remain in diamond. So if this list doesn't help you, I do apologize. But is this maybe a little bit geared toward lower elo for a little bit of examples of trying to climb out of the elo that you want to quickly? We got like five days basically, right? So, with that being said, those champions all kind of play a little bit differently, but they all have kind of the same idea in terms of you have AoE, we have lane dominance, but you both want to snowball the game off of whichever kind of lane and lead that you generate. B tier, quote unquote, these are champions that are actually still pretty good, but maybe the other champions above you could play instead and do better. These are champions you probably play though if you do main them or, and are good at them, or say Jinx is banned, and this is one of your pocket picks. So we have Vayne, Kaisa, Tristana, Zaya, and Ezreal. A little bit of an asterisk next to Zaya because Zaya actually probably could be higher, especially if you're playing with the duo and Rakan specifically. She does apparently do a lot better with Rakan right now. But without Rakan, if you're just by yourself and you don't have a support that really synergizes with Zaya, Zaya is down here for that reason. Her win rate across these several websites too were also particularly low if that wasn't the case. So that is kind of the reason why Zaya is down there. She could be interchangeable. But Jinx is probably a better Tristana right now. But Tristana is something you can play if, like, Jinx is gone. Or you just want to play Tristana instead. Last tier. Not necessarily a garbage tier, but just the things that you probably don't want to play. Because there's probably something better or easier you could play with less stress. Callista, Corky, Caitlyn, Quinn, Varys. Asterix next to Quinn, because Quinn could actually be higher here. Especially if you get a lane lead. But Varus consistently across all of these examples have kind of been like the worst AD carry for whatever reason, I'm not exactly sure, and we'll have to go into that to another video. But with that being said, you probably don't want to play Varus in these last couple days on the climb, unless you're a Varus main, or like Varus is your go-to after a champion right now. Caitlyn, meanwhile, can also be good, like Tristana or Jinx, but Jinx and Tristana are better Caitlyn's right now, right? Jinx is a better Tristana right now, so you want to actually play Jinx out of those three, but again, if Jinx is picked away or banned, you could go Tristana, or you could go Caitlyn. It's a possibility. So that being said, that's kind of the pseudo tier list, mainly geared towards low elo, but it maybe might help in high elo, who knows. Now for a Jinx specific tier list though, here we go. S tier as in versus Jinx, as in things you probably want to ban if you're trying to play Jinx. Heimerdinger, Ash, Draven, Misfortune, Sivir, and honorable mention to Swain, which is why I brought him up earlier in the other tier list, because right now Jinx, if that is picked, is not, she doesn't have a good win rate against him right now. And these last five days when you're trying to climb, you might just want to be better off saying, you know what, I'm just, if I know someone's going to play Swain on the enemy team, and it looks like he's dominant in my games, just ban him, just get him out of there. I know some people say that's like bronze advice to just ban things you struggle against. It's really not when you're trying to climb in a few days especially. Just get that out of your game. Don't like let it tilt you. All these champions, you might be like, no, I just, I want to put my pride in line. I want to beat them. You can if you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I ain't your father. But what I am saying is, at this point in the season, if it does still stress you, if it does still tilt you, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, let me just ban that and get that out of my game. So it just doesn't tilt me. So like, nothing that can happen like that does. So I can play my best game and live my best life. Just saying. On the flip side, things that you could probably pick Jinx into and still probably succeed the most, because these following champions have the worst win rate against Jinx, Zaya. Quinn, Callista, Caitlyn, Varys, and Tristana. Varys is kind of bad against everybody. Callista is kind of bad against everybody too, for the matter. Jinx is a better Tristana, and also a better Caitlyn. Quinn maybe can vary a little bit. And Zaya again, Asterix, if she's playing with the Rakan, she's a lot more deadlier, so do be wary of that. But that's gonna be all for a tier list for this video. So thank you so much for watching this video. Bit of a longer video. Of course, again, if you have any disagreements, please bring them up in the comment section down below. I'm perfectly fine with being wrong, even after all this research I've done. It's not necessarily 100% accurate research, of course, and it might vary depending on your elo. If you're diamond watching this, what I said in here might not work for you or apply to you or it might be wrong to you, and you might have better advice specifically for diamond, right? I tried to make more, more of a kind of like a general, a little bit geared towards low elo, but still general kind of like tier lists and reasonings. So by all means, if you're even like platinum higher, it might be different for you. So bring it up definitely in the comment section down below. 
But that is all from this video from me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification because that's the actual subscribe button. But I don't know which video will be next because I could have a lot of kinks. So until this time, take care. GG, get jinxed. Thank you for watching and enjoy pizza responsibly.